everybody, how's it going? Today I am going to be sharing with you a bit of a story time. This is uh, quite a long awaited video. It's a topic that I've wanted to talk about for a very long time here on my channel and as you can probably tell from the title, I'm going to be talking about my experience with all of the issues over the past several years that I've had with um, digestive health problems. And this is something that I've talked a little bit about in a few different videos. Um, I've mentioned it. Uh, I've mentioned things like IBS, but I haven't gone into detail at all. And um, this is a, a pretty requested video. I've been pretty reluctant to talk about this only because it's so personal but at the same time I've really really wanted to talk about it because I think or I know that so many of you and a lot of people out there uh, have a lot of health issues as well have a lot of digestive health issues as well and I think it's important sometimes to share our stories and our experiences I've really had to realize that no one is perfect no one's health is perfect 100% of the time, even those who lead very healthy lifestyles. Um, there's always something that everyone is um, struggling with or has struggled with, and so I know that I'm not alone in, in this, um, but you know, it's definitely, it's definitely a personal story that I'll be sharing with you. So I'm just gonna get started, and I will start at the beginning. I had a C. diff, a C. difficile, back in 2011, was it 2011, 2012, which is a, a pretty severe uh, bacterial infection in the gut, and I've mentioned this really briefly before. Having that infection uh, is what led to the development of post-infectious IBS, uh, or irritable bowel syndrome, for me uh, over the, the following or the subsequent years after the infection. So C. difficile is most often contracted, I guess you could say, in hospital settings after the use of antibiotics. Um, it's most often found, I believe, in seniors and elderlies or people with a compromised immune system. So I was put on a couple rounds of antibiotics several months prior for a totally unrelated issue um, that led to the development of of me um, having C. diff. I started to have uh, really severe diarrhea, basically, like 9, 10, 11 times a day, like it was really, really bad. I actually remember very distinctly the day that like I had my first, I guess, you know, C. diff, I don't know what you want to call it, explosion. I had to leave work, it was really bad, I was really quite sick, and so that intensity went on for quite a few weeks. I couldn't eat anything. Everything was causing a lot of pain in my stomach, stitching pain, like the infection was actually very painful. It really hurt to eat. So I knew that something was wrong. I didn't know if I had celiac, like I, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. So went to the doctor and the test came back uh, after some stool samples that I had C. difficile. So I was put on an antibiotic to eradicate the infection, which it did. It, it totally relieved my symptoms. But for quite a few months after that, like things didn't feel the same. Um, although I wasn't, you know, running to the washroom ten times a day, I still like things just weren't weren't back to normal. I was told I had post-infectious IBS at that point because my gut seemed to be like very sensitive. And so I was kind of left with that uh, for a couple of, for a few years actually, and things sort of st started to like improve and kind of go back to normal, but like, I always felt like my gut never went back to normal after the infection. I had just graduated as a nutritionist around the time that I had the infection, so I definitely felt like there were, you know, things that I could do. It was kind of my first run with kind of an elimination diet and, and exploring that I did all kinds of different gut healing protocols on my own terms um, you know probiotics and things like that of course things seemed to subside for the most part so I, I did kind of re revert back to eating maybe a little bit dairy or a few grains that I would have eaten in the past and like I was okay for the most part but like you know 
didn't have optimal gut health. In the spring of 2016, very abruptly, absolutely out of nowhere, I, one evening, uh, again, I remember this very distinctly, my stomach was really upset and I just had to run to the washroom and that night, like it all just came back, I had diarrhea seven, eight, nine times a day. After that, like the next day and the the following few days, I thought, oh, I definitely, like I just have the stomach flu, it, it'll go away in a few days. And then two weeks went by, three weeks went by, a month went by, I was still running to the washroom um, like several times a day. Um, I couldn't tolerate anything, it seemed just horrible, horrible symptoms uh, I was dealing with. And so of course I went back to the doctor, I was so afraid that I was having a C. diff relapse even after all these years. Um, and thankfully I wasn't, everything came back normal. And I remember I, all I wanted was for it to just go away. I kept thinking, um, like, it'll go back to, like, back to normal tomorrow, right? So I was referred to a gastroenterologist because obviously things were not correcting themselves. I was tested for celiac, I was tested for Crohn's, um, colitis, those sorts of things. The gastroenterologist had me do a colonoscopy, an endoscopy, I had more, I had blood tests, more stool samples, I had a barium enema x-ray, like I, it was, the, the summer of 2016 was awful, it was so awful, and combined with the fact that like I, I couldn't eat anything, uh, everything was making me run to the washroom and everything was upsetting my stomach so I developed a phobia of food so I was losing weight and I was just all around so stressed out about it um, and I, I weigh 105 pounds to begin with so to lose five, six, seven, eight pounds like I did was not a good thing. So the colonoscopy and you know those results came back, uh, everything came back normal except that I had inflammation like in the lining of my GI and I had a very spastic colon which is another term for irritable bowel so I was there diagnosed with irritable bowel syndrome which was kind of like okay but it's also I felt like everything was so vague and I also felt like so now what like when do I just go back to normal that's all I wanted was to just to have this stop because it wouldn't it was relentless i remembered the gastroenterologist saying to me it's it's time that you see this as a chronic condition this might not ever go away and i was in his office and i just like just completely started crying and i just felt so like all i could think of was i don't understand like i don't i just want to go back to normal i just wanted to like live my normal life where i can eat food and not have a very upset stomach and not have to run to the washroom. So I remember that. That really sucked. So he pretty much um, kind of left it at that. He did uh, suggest that I could take antidepressants um, and another kind of medication that I didn't want to go on, but it was mostly just kind of left at so in September of 2016 is when I decided to like really figure out what to do basically for myself. So I came upon the specific carbohydrate diet. They have a book called Breaking the Vicious Cycle, which I do recommend. It definitely was like kind of like the starting point of me on my gut healing journey. And the specific carbohydrate diet is tailored specifically to those with Crohn's, colitis, chronic diarrhea. From there, I completely eliminated all grains, all nuts and seeds. There's a, a bunch of other things that I eliminated, which did yield like results. Like I, I definitely noticed improvements from following SCD, um, but I still, you know, definitely wasn't healed <laughs> or anything like that. And then in the new year, in 2017, February, I started working with a naturopath and those are details that are for like an entirely different video as there's really a whole lot that went into everything that I underwent in terms of the protocols that I went on for my gut but I was put on um, antimicrobials for like the potential for SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and just working on like general 
bacterial overgrowth because it was very clear that there was there was a bacterial overgrowth happening. I eliminated so many things and I've been on every type of dietary regime under the sun for IBS and for, you know, these sorts of things. So I've definitely uh, I have a lot of experience with elimination diets. I started following a low FODMAP diet back in like just a few months ago, which I'd say has been thus far the most helpful um, diet for IBS that I have found for myself. It's been so helpful. For any of you guys who aren't familiar with the term low FODMAP, it's basically an acronym that stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols, which are short chain carbohydrates that uh, tend to ferment easier or irritate a gut easier in those with IBS. So it's so it's your low FODMAP, meaning that you're eating like lower amounts of those types of fermentable foods. And there's a big long list of what that is. I actually really quite like it, I, probably because I do so well on it. Um, but of course, you don't want to be entirely low FODMAP indefinitely. It's very important to reintroduce some of those higher uh, FODMAP foods back again because they are still very good for the gut. This is a whole other video. Anyway, I've come a long way and I have made enormous, enormous improvements and I am definitely um, nowhere near as, as bad as I was a couple of years ago when I was in the worst of it. And that's in part because of some of the gut healing work that I've done and also because I'm now so much more familiar with what foods uh, will set me off or the, the foods that are triggers for me. In terms of where I'm at today, I no longer have, you know, diarrhea 10 times a day. I, I don't deal with any of those major symptoms anymore. Um, but I do have to be careful what I eat because it, it can elicit a flare-up for me. And yeah, other than that, um, you know, gut health is my priority and, and I focus on supporting my gut as much as possible. and. I now know what works for me and what doesn't, but it's still a journey nonetheless. One of the things that has come out of this experience um, is that I know my body so much more now, which I think is so important for us to do, especially if you are struggling with any kind of health issue. It's so important to listen to your body and to, you know, be curious about the symptoms that you're having and to always kind of be aware of what might be contributing to how you're feeling. So that's kind of everything. I hope that wasn't too much, um, but that's basically what I've been dealing with and what has been the forefront of my life for several years now. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about gut health. I'm sure there will be videos in the future that I will make where I'll share more details on, you know, maybe some of my favorite gut healing foods and that sort of thing. If you guys have any questions at all, be sure to leave me a comment below and I'd be happy to answer them or save them for a future video. And I think that's it. If you guys would like, you can follow me on Instagram. I share a lot more like life updatey things on Instagram. You can follow me on Facebook or Twitter and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys very soon. Bye.